Hey guys, I'm Will from Testin. And I'm Norm from Testin. Norm, we just tried the OSVR from Razer. So one of Razer's big announcements here, and Razer, a company known for dabbling in, let's call it hardware that maybe isn't always fully baked. Sometimes it does not come to market. Frequently at CES, we see one thing that's moderately cool that it will ship in three months, and then we see one thing that we will see never again, like a completely modular PC design. We cannot pass judgment on this yet, but we will tell you what it is. And OSVR is their open platform. Basically, unlike Oculus, they are not making a goggle and software platform themselves just to sell. I don't well, think that's smart of anyone to do. I think that they're going to make their own goggle and software platform. Right. But, but not what they're just doing is by saying, themselves hey, to sell. here's an open source framework for hardware, drivers, software, everything you need to talk together, including plugins for things like Unreal and Unity, and then a driver model so that LG, Samsung, anybody who wants to can make a VR headset, hook it in, and it'll they'll know it'll work with games. It's essentially an open source version of DirectX, but for virtual reality, which you know on paper sounds like a great idea. Imagine Android for virtual reality as opposed to the all-inclusive Apple model. When you put it that way, it doesn't sound as good. Well, that's why I don't know if it's it's going to be that good. So what they have in terms of hardware here is uh, what they call a hacker dev kit, mm -hmm. and it's something that's going to be released in June. Now, you can't base the experience on the hardware itself. I, and I assume that this is something that they're going to release in June to get both software experience so that develop, game developers can work on, on the platform, and then hardware developer experience so they can build things like eye trackers, head trackers, integrate things like Leap Motion and all sorts of other stuff with the, with the platform that they're building. And based on our trial of this hacker dev kit, uh, the experience right now needs a lot of work. So um, I, I have to say the VR itself, the, the image, the headset was nice, it was light. It was a very um, light headset. It had optical uh, corrections, so you could adjust the lenses to get in focus without having to put on, I could take my glasses off, use the headset without having to put on contact lenses or something like that, which is good for me because I have a really hard prescription and can't see, say, a rift without my glasses or contacts on. Well, you basically meant in, in addition to IVD adjust, adjustment, yes. moving the lenses uh, based on the distance you, you of your can eyes, move them forward and back. you can also move them forward and back. Now, the screen that we're using is a 1080p LCD. Oh, it's and an LCD? It's an LCD. It looked pentile to me, but I, I have no, bad it's eyes. Totally so. an LCD. And the demo they had used a Leap Motion. So Leap Motion is one of their partners, and that's basically what they like kind of exemplifies the platform they want to build. They want to build a platform where other hardware companies, whether it's Leap Motion, whether it's another IMU maker, can build their own headsets and build their own accessories. Or, to, or components to go into headsets, I think is more important. Yeah. To work with their software platform. So I mean, this is a real raw demo. Uh, they're not set, it's not set up so you can see on the screen. The experience that I had, I don't know if you did the same thing, is basically I, I opened my eyes, I was in a kind of forest environment, and I lifted my hands up, I could see skeletal hands in front of me. If I laid them out flat, then a fireball or a water ball would form. And then theoretically, I could throw that fireball or water ball at a target. In practice, that was impossible. Yeah, yeah, the, the demo was really rough. Uh, we tested Leap Motion before, and while it has gotten better, all the kind of the hiccups that you feel with Leap Motion, where tracking would lose suddenly, or be shaky, we felt that, because not only were your hands moving, your head was also well, moving. And it's magnified when you're in the in an immersive VR environment. Yes. Um, as for the actual VR, the, the 3D experience was pretty good. The screen looked okay for a 1080p screen. I noticed a little bit of trailing as I turned from side yeah. to side, but it was better than early Oculus prototypes for sure. Um, so we talked to an engineer and we asked them, is this something that you're gonna, if it's open source, is it something you're gonna have a minimum spec for? Yeah. Can you guarantee that people making OSVR class headsets will have 75 hertz, will have positional tracking? And they couldn't guarantee any of that. Well, because basically it's open. They wanna make sure that anyone can build as cheap a headset as they want, or as nice a headset as they want. And their strategy seems to be get as many people on board because it's them, everyone else versus Oculus. I, I think, I mean, I think it's a little unfair to say, hey, they don't have a plan for that. They talked about things the equivalent of capabilities bits, which basically means that when you plug in your headset, it'll connect to the driver on the system and say, okay, here's what I can do as a headset. I have a hand tracker, I have this resolution display, this is the amount of optical correction I need, here's all the stuff that my, my device is capable of. And assuming they keep the driver infrastructure and the APIs updated fast enough to take advantage of new things that we haven't even imagined today, that could be really promising and could allow them to move a lot faster than Oculus does. If you look at what happened with the Android ecosystem, Absolutely. new innovations came to Android way before they came to iOS. 
as a result of the open nature of the platform. Yeah, it'll be up to hardware makers to take advantage of this platform if they want to partner with Razer. Mm -hmm. It'll be up to game developers working whether on Unity or on Real to actually implement you know, a whole scale of different VR experiences. Like you said, you or know, what port the stuff that they're already building for Oculus over to the new APIs. And so who knows? They're announcing, uh, releasing this in June, the dev kit, and uh, 2015 will be a, a race to get to the first I, consumer virtual reality kit I out. I expect we'll see more on this at GDC and probably E3. I don't think anything. I don't think this is going to ship in 2015 as a consumer edition. Yeah. I don't think there's any like chance. Like we where said, they're getting Razer known for throwing a lot of ideas out there. It's nice that they're trying, but who knows what we'll see actual but, products. Hey, at least this is open. People will be able to build on it. And you, if you have a 3D printer, you can build your own chassis and put your own screen and board in it. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll have more tested uh, from untested from CES 2015. See you guys soon. See ya. Bye.